prepare to uh, live? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 easiest bosses in the Soul series. For more gaming videos, check out our new spin-off channel, Mojo Plays, for in-depth reviews, thoughtful video essays, detailed character origins, and insightful commentary. Mojo Plays, game smarter. For this list, we're looking at the bosses throughout the Soul series of video games, which are generally considered to be the easiest to defeat. We'll be considering all of the Souls games for this list, including Demon's Souls and Bloodborne. Number 10, Asylum Demon, Dark Souls. You have two options when facing the Asylum Demon. Confront him head on during your first encounter, or run away with your tail between your legs and return later when you've powered up with some better gear. If you do it right away, some people still consider this an easy fight, but if you take the second option, which really you're supposed to do, the Asylum Demon is an absolute cakewalk. Granted, it's meant to be your introduction to bosses in the game, so you might have a bit of trouble, but anyway. If you use that plunge attack on it, which you're really set up for, a large chunk of its health will immediately be taken off, making the rest of the fight significantly easier. The Asylum Demon is also incredibly slow, so simply circling around and slashing away is no problem at all. Number 9, The Guardian Dragon. The Guardian Dragon is a red wyvern found in Aldia's Keep, and we gotta say, we were expecting a lot more from a fight with a frickin' dragon. His attacks are pretty strong, but he's also super slow, which allows you to easily dodge or block his advances throughout the fight. Hugging his legs is also a fantastic strategy, as he's extremely weak against Dark Hail due to his big size. If all of that wasn't easy enough, he can also be defeated before the fight even begins by firing off a few powerful spells before he has a chance to get up. Kinda lazy for a guardian, eh? Number 8, Crystal Sage, Dark Souls 3. The Crystal Sage certainly looks like a menacing foe. It's basically a ghost witch thing, and it shoots crystals, and it can clone itself. But that said, it's simple, especially if you can be aggressive. It mainly attacks with magic, and while these can hurt, the attacks are also very slow, very telegraphed, and pretty easy to avoid. If you simply dodge the incoming spells, get in real comfy and then slash it to hell with a powerful weapon, the sage will go down easy enough. While the cloning aspect can get a bit tiresome, the real one is always color-coded, so it's pretty easy to figure out once you know that. Number 7, Royal Rat Vanguard, Dark Souls 2. Okay, let's admit it, rats are a pretty cliched enemy, so fighting the Royal Rat Vanguard isn't exactly exciting and it doesn't even look very cool. To top it off, it's also painfully simple, making this probably the weakest fight of the entire series. Keeping an eye on the Vanguard is simple enough once you know how to spot it, and it doesn't have a ton of damage resistance, so it goes down extremely easily if you smack it with a powerful weapon. Another way to tackle this battle is to use Soul Apiece, which can one-shot kill the rats. Just stay quick and stay mobile, and you should be fine. Number 6, Pinwheel, Dark Souls. Pinwheel is harder to look at than it is to fight. This boss has a reputation within the Souls community for being stupid easy, especially if you fight him later in the game once you've leveled up a few times. Really, all you have to do is charge him before he can make clones of himself and then smack him a couple of times, literally, with your sword. That's about it. That said, despite how easy he is to take down, he can actually be fought earlier in the game when you're far weaker, making him much tougher. But even then, most people consider him a cinch. Number 5, Prowling Magus and Congregation, Dark Souls 2. The sheer number of the Prowling Magus and Congregation can seem intimidating, no doubt. However, each individual enemy is very weak, and the entire battle can be effortlessly finished if you have a wide sweeping weapon or a couple of powerful spells. Of course, it can be difficult if you rush in and make the mistake of trying to target just one guy. But circling the room, taking your time, and making wide sweeps with no target intended is the best way to go. Even better, just use Profound Still and slice through them like you're John Wick with a sword.
Number four, Deacons of the Deep, Dark Souls 3. The Deacons of the Deep are located within the Cathedral of the Deep, imagine that, and serve to defend a coffin from intruders. While, like the last group boss, they kinda look and sound intimidating, this is far from the truth. Aside from the deep soul move, which can be troublesome, they're a cinch. Following the deacon, which is glowing red, is super simple, and they don't deal that much damage, so just don't get stun locked and you can swipe away. Just try to avoid the dark orb and you're golden. Number three, the Witch of Hemwick, Bloodborne. The Witch of Hemwick's pretty freaking gross. She's a withered, wrinkly old lady thing, and she collects eyeballs, which she pastes into her robe. It's too bad her prowess doesn't match her appearance, though. The Witch is an incredibly easy boss, and arguably Bloodborne's simplest. Finding the Invisible Witch is not an issue, as she emits a bright red glow. You can also pretty easily avoid the stalkers and just focus on her. On top of that, she is stunningly easy to backstab and visceral attack, which, as you should know, deals extremely high amounts of damage. She's a withered old lady, and Unfortunately, she fights like one. Number two, the Giant Lord, Dark Souls 2. It's a towering giant wielding an enormous sword. How can he be so easy? Serving as the king of all giants, the Giant Lord is an intimidating looking foe, but incredibly easy once you get the hang of him. Staying between his legs and hacking away at his ankles makes for a good strategy, especially since you can avoid most of his attacks by just staying there. That said, there's an even easier way to do it. If you stand on the platform to his left and spam him with magic, he goes down. His attacks are definitely devastating if he connects, but if you take care to avoid them, no problemo. Number one, Covetous Demon, Dark Souls 2. You gotta say, this guy doesn't even look intimidating. While appearances can be deceiving, they're certainly not in this case, he really does move and act like a big old slug. This Jabba the Hutt looking monstrosity's attacks are incredibly slow and very telegraphed, which makes avoiding them all too easy. Actually, ugh, we hesitate to even call these attacks. They're more just like flops and bites. As long as you manage to avoid him and stay off to the side while attacking away, the covetous demon is a walk in the park. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.